This is the R210 CMS Compound Mitosaur by Evolution. Now if you're thinking about getting yourself a new saw, stay tuned because we're going to check this out right now. <laughs> Hey what's up guys, Justin here and today we're taking a look at this Evolution Compound Mitosaur. Now I've just had this delivered, we're going to open it up, we're going to give it a go, I'm going to take you through all the specifications and uh, we're going to see what it's like. So let's begin by opening this up and uh, having a look what's inside. Okay, so we've got some packaging, there we go, make sure, make sure you recycle all your packaging. There we go, what's this? One blade, one saw, one blade, cuts all. That's cool. This is actually one of the things that uh, I think is kind of quite significant about this saw is that it's advertising or highlighting the fact that you only need one saw blade in this and it's actually gonna cut a, uh, a large amount of different materials. So um, I'm looking forward to giving that a go. So we got the uh, the dust bag, instruction manual with an Allen key for the blade, to change the blade. And then here is the saw itself. So again, make sure you recycle all your bits and pieces. There we go, let's put that down there so here it is initial thoughts it's quite a small unit it's um you know certainly definitely going to be able to uh, carry this around quite easily that's for sure it's uh it's pretty light as well and if i just uh put it back down into this position here you know, that's not going to be a problem carrying that around at all. And uh, that'll fit quite nicely in the back of the van. So on the back here, we've just got this small catch. We just push that down gently, you can pull that out and it sort of comes up. So we've got quite a nice movement there on the saw, which is quite good. Um, right, let's get this open so the lead itself is not that thick it's probably not the the best kind of cord that you would want on your power tools but um you know there's nothing wrong with it but it's probably just a little bit on the thin side um so we can actually change the angle here so You've got the locator on the side here, and as you can probably hear, it does lock into different set positions, and they are 45, 30, 22 and a half, 15, and zero, or 90 degrees. And that does go both ways as well. So once you've got that into position, there is a small nut here that you can just do up and that will actually lock that into position. I'm going to check the squareness of these uh, of the cut when we have a go, when we uh, fire it up. So on the back here, we can undo this and that will actually give you your bevel. So you've got a dial just here, so that gives you the idea of the angle that you're cutting at. Um, and again, we just set it to the right angle and we can just do that up on the back here. Okay, so that's good, that's locked into position. We've got a clamp on the front here. Okay. Now you might see in the back there, I have got another Evolution saw, it's the Fury 3. Uh, I will get to do a review on that at some point. Um, but the clamps on that are a little bit quicker to use than these, because if you want to change the height of these, you've really got to 
take the time to unscrew it. So uh, that could be a little bit annoying, but you know, still a, still good to have a, a clamp on there and that will just do up. The other like bolt that we've got here, then we'll actually move the fence. So this is going to be particularly important then if you're doing your bevels, otherwise you're going to end up cutting straight through the guard. Now, although this saw is going to cut through pretty much anything, we don't want it cutting through our, our fence. So uh, obviously we would move that out of the way if we were going to do some bevel cuts. Now, one of the things that would worry me very slightly is that it is very light. I mean, it's good that it's light and uh, it's going to make it quite easy to carry around. But if you're going to be cutting some quite substantial material, it's quite a small saw to do that. Now, when we fire this up in a, in a little while, I'm definitely going to be screwing this down. So you do get these holes in the saw. Uh, so, you know, you can actually screw it down and I would definitely recommend that. I think that's everything. Um, there we go. Yes, yeah, so we've got the dust bag. We've got the extraction point on the back. So we'll give it a go with this. I might chuck the hoover on there as well, um, just to make sure that that works. Okay, great. Let's, uh, I guess we should give it a go. Right, so I've got the saw all secure now and it's all uh, screwed down into position on this bench so it isn't going anywhere. So I've double checked it, everything is uh, ready to go. I've plugged it in. So uh, we're gonna check out the sound of this motor. Wow, that's got a bit of torque. I mean, that, that saw starts up pretty quickly. So first of all, I've got this old pallet wood here. Now this is where this clamp is gonna be a little bit annoying because you know it's gonna take a while to keep adjusting this. Um, I am going to use it for the purpose of this review and video, but generally I would just kind of hold that in position but uh let's be safe let's clamp that down let's make sure that's really secure okay that's going nowhere so really important make sure you've got your safety goggles on well that is a brand new blade um so you would expect it to cut nicely, but that went through there like a knife through melted butter. And uh, there's hardly any breakout on that timber. So uh, that's really nice. I'm loving that. So here we've got a piece of hardwood. This is a bit of ash. So uh, let's give this a go. So I suppose the good thing about this clamp is you can sort of twist it round to the side here if you have got quite a thin piece of material. So you can sort of adjust it appropriately. And again, look at that, that's cut that beautifully. And there's like hardly any breakout. So that's on a solid wood, that's on, a, uh, that's on this piece of ash. So uh, yeah, really good, nice. So let's go ahead and cut this bit of plastic. Wow, cutting through that bit of plastic, that is lovely. You would not even know that's been cut with a saw. That is absolutely brilliant. Bit of aluminium U-channel. So let's uh, give this a go. So that's 
left. Hardly any burrs on it. So it did leave just a tiny sharp bit attached to it. Um, but to be honest, cutting any metal, you're always going to just rub the edges with a little bit of paper, but you can see the cut on that is spot on. So now we've got a bit of steel tubing. Uh, it's not the thickest bit of steel, but it's certainly going to do the job. left a tiny bit of a splinter on there but that's not an issue at all because that comes off um, but look at that that's really cut that so well and uh, it's not even hot that's a uh, superb so here we've got a bit of tongue and groove softwood and uh, this is 121 millimeters wide the sword does claim to cut 125 millimeters wide at 55 millimeters thick, so uh, this should be no problem. There we go, that's lovely. Yeah, no problem, 121 millimeters wide. Um, great stuff. I love this, on the box here it's got a picture of the different materials that you can cut and it's got a lump of wood with a load of nails sticking in the end of it. So uh, what we're going to do is grab this bit of timber. I've got a few nails here. Let's whack them in. Safety goggles, JB. few nails in the end of this timber. Let's give it a go. There we go. Look at that. No problem at all. So what I want to do now is just see what this is like cutting mitres and angles and see how accurate it is. I just want to also check before I get started, see what the, the blade is like in terms of cutting at 90 degrees off this fence. So uh, we'll just do a few tests and use the, uh, the squares. So using this speed square, I can see straight away there's a little bit of a gap there. It's not quite square to the fence. If I want to get really accurate cuts, I'm going to have to adjust it very slightly. Now another thing I did notice on this, it doesn't have a brake for the motor, so it does take a little bit of time to uh, slow down. Yeah, so it definitely needed a little bit of adjustment though, you can see that spot on. And let's have a go at 45 degrees. Great thing about locking this down is I can actually push it back against the fence. So this board is 94 millimeters wide. So that means this saw will cut a board 94 millimeters wide at a 45 degree angle. That's probably your, your absolute maximum. Okay, it doesn't look great there. And it doesn't look too great there either. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put these two pieces together. A little 
little bit wobbly though. No, that's not really, that's not really going for 90. There you go, that's 90 degrees there. And you can see it's opened up. So let's see if we can fix them. So let's see if we can fix the 45 degree issue here. So it does look like the saw needs to come round very slightly. Still, let's try the other way. Let's try 45 in this direction. Okay, it's still not great, but it's better this way, that's for sure. Using the angles on this aren't quite accurate so uh, you're going to definitely have to uh, set it up using a speed square or a combination square. So let's have a go to cutting a bevel on this. Now I have set the saw to exactly 90 degrees so we know that's right. All we'll do now is move the saw down to the side. So there's no kind of stops on this, it doesn't click into position so you've really got to eyeball it on the gauge here but if you take it all the way over that's on 45 so I'm guessing that's what we'll uh, that's what we'll do so we'll lock that into position there yeah again that's not quite right you can see there is a a bit of a gap there so it's actually cutting at too much of an angle. So we're going to need to lift it up slightly. Let's see if uh, we can get this angle right this time. There we go. So that is better. So I've had to adjust that slightly. So I guess the cons of this machine are the actual setup of the bevel and the angle you're going to have to do this manually I mean the cutting capability is absolutely spot on but the angles are just not quite right well let's take a look and consider the dust extraction on this machine now as we've looked at already you do get this dust bag um, it really does collect a bit of dust um, there's a bit in there I can feel there's a, a small pouch full in there um, but I don't think these are really the best design. I guess they're better than nothing. You know, you will end up having lots of dust coming pouring out of here. So you do collect a little bit, but as you can see, the area is quite dusty around here. There's, there's a fair amount of sawdust. So, you know, certainly use your dust bag, but let's see if we can uh, attach a hoover to this and see what difference it can make. So I'm using my Titan vacuum cleaner and it's the one that I use on site and that I use in my shop as a, as a uh, dust extraction. The annoying thing is, it's the pipe just doesn't fit on here. Um, I mean, I can get over this. I just tend to use a bit of duct tape. So, uh... gets a bit noisy when you got that and that going on but uh, as you might have been able to see that was sucking the dust up to a degree I mean you're never going to get completely um, 
you know, 100% dust extraction from your, from your uh, vacuum anyway, but um, certainly better than nothing and it's uh, always a good thing to have a dust extraction point on there. So uh, yeah, that's cool. So you can see on here, you've got a little bit of technical information. So you've got 1200 watt unit, it's 3750 revs per minute run speed. The saw blade is 210 millimeter diameter with a 25.4 millimeter bore. And it's also showing here that your max depth and width of cut is 125 millimeters at 55 millimeters thick. You'll also notice on here front, also back, you've got quite easy access to the brushes. So that's going to make it quite easy to change those if you need to. Now to change the blade on the saw, it is super easy. But the first thing you need to make sure you do is cut the power. You really want to make sure that this doesn't suddenly start up while you're trying to change the blade. That would not be cool. So there is a button just here which we can press and that will actually lock the blade into position. So do bear in mind when you're actually undoing a saw blade, to undo it you actually have to turn it the opposite way. So rather than a clockwise direction to do it up, you're actually doing it clockwise to undo it. So uh, we just use the Allen key that is supplied with the, with the saw. And there we go, you can just undo it. And as you can see, that's turning clockwise, but it is undoing and coming out. So we'll just take the bolt out and we'll take that collar off there as well. And already the, the blade has literally just dropped out. So if I just move the guard up out of the way, then and just take the saw off like so. Just make sure when you replace the blade that you get it round the right way. It does illustrate on here which way the blade should spin. So we just need to release the guard here and then we can just slide the saw up into position like so. Just put that collar on and then the bolt again, making sure that you then now turn it anti-clockwise to tighten it. There we go. So I've just done that finger tight. Just use that button to lock that into position again and just turn that anti-clockwise to tighten it. Okay, so there you go guys. It's the Evolution R210 CMS compound miter saw. I actually really like it. Now, what you need to bear in mind is this is a very cheap unit. You can pick this up for about 50 pounds. I think I saw it on Screwfix yesterday for about 55 pounds. It's a great entry level mitre saw. You know, it's not one of the best, but it certainly is going to do the job. And if it's going to be your first saw, then this is a great starting place. Now for me, this is a brilliant, lightweight, mobile unit. I'm gonna chuck this in the van and this is going to come in very handy indeed. So if you've got any questions or comments about the saw, leave them in the box below. And uh, why not let me know if you have bought yourself one, what do you think of it? Is it a good saw? Do you rate it? Let me know, that would be fantastic. I will leave details of this exact model down below. So uh, if you do fancy it, you can uh, go and pick yourself one up. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. And don't forget to check out some of my other videos. And uh, also don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell icon and get notified when I release a new video. Right, that's it from me. I'm clocking off now. I'll see you next time.